Today I am filming this video for you on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. My home and also my studio is also on the land of the Gadigal people. And for most of you watching this today, who are most likely in Aubrey, you are on Wiradjuri country. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Hello, I'm Jeff McCann and I'm the lead artist for this project, the Aubrey World Community Workshops. Welcome. So before we get started, I just want to let you know that below the video, there will be the time codes for this where you can jump through to the different chapters of the video. So if you need to pause anything, if you need to go back and have a look at something or you need to skip forward, you can just by clicking on the different chapters. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So I'm an artist, designer, maker, business person, and all round creative. I make a lot of different things from public art and murals. I do a lot of collaborations. I do artwork licensing. I make jewelry. I run workshops. There's a lot of different things to my practice. I really like to embrace my inner child and have a lot of fun and be very playful in what I do. I also get a lot of inspiration from like childhood TV shows that I would watch and movies. Uh, the natural world as well and nature and a lot of nostalgia. I like to tap into who is my younger former self and bring that out onto the paper or the paint or the, the cardboard that I'm using. So what is this project? Why are we doing this workshop? Where is this mural going? These are all very valid questions that you ask. I've been asked by the Aubrey City Council to paint a mural on the external outside wall of the Aubrey Swim Centre later in the year. The thing about this mural is that we actually need you, the Aubrey community, to get involved in it. And I want you to be involved in it. My aim for this project is to make an artwork that is really colourful, really whimsical, engaging and playful. And I want it to really symbolise and embody the community's feelings about Aubrey, what makes it a great place to live in, what makes it a great place to visit. It's able to be a really true collaboration with the community and showcase everyone's voices uh, in one amazing artwork. So there's three stages to the mural. There is stage one, the workshops. Stage two, creating the design. And stage three, painting the mural. Workshops. So this is probably why you're watching this video right now and it's where you come into it. So what we're needing you to do is to complete this workshop, take a photo of your artwork and submit it through the council's website and that way it can be included in the final mural design. Stage two, creating the final mural design. What I'm gonna do is once I receive all of your artworks, I'm then going to translate them into one larger artwork design. Think of it like a, like a tapestry kind of feel or a patchworking feel, and it'll become the design we paint on the wall. In order to create that design, what I do is I take all your artworks that you submit, I put them into my iPad, and I start to play around with them and translate them so they all kind of sit in the same world. I play around with scale and I play around with line work and pattern and I make everything feel like it exists in this sort of same place and that creates a really nice cohesion to the whole thing. Okay, here's an example. So, we have someone's artwork where they've drawn a really cute frog in the foreground. They've got their house of their, uh, their family house. I love that they've put my, uh, my family and friends in this big neon sign. On the left hand side, we've got all the things they like to do at school. So we've got sports and playing basketball and doing art. So in the translation, what I've been able to do is I keep the same structure all there. We've got the frog, which is now a lot bigger and it's on this almost like lily pad kind of um, platform. I've transformed the house into this really fun wonky kind of building where the love hearts that were originally in the billboard have now turned into this really cool big sign at the top. And then to the left here, I really merged the sports all together and wanted to make this almost like a tunnel portal that you could sort of go through. Uh, out of the basketball net, up the front we've got this basketball pattern and up the back we've got the, the brushes of the, the, the paint brushes with all the paint on top. They kind of look a little bit like cupcakes and like I'm not angry about that. So you can see how 
from taking your artwork and translating it into something else. The main core structure of it all is still there. The story you're trying to tell is still there, but we've been able to just elevate it into a way that allows it to be more accessible for painting onto a wall. Stage three, paint the mural. This is the really exciting part. So over a few days at the end of the year, I'm gonna be painting the mural on the outside wall of the Aubrey Swim Center and you can come down and watch me do it. The best way to stay up to date and find out when it's actually happening is to follow my social media and the council's social media, and that'll tell you when. And it'll be really cool to see your face, come down, say hello, and um, watch the artwork come to life before your eyes. It's time to talk about the concept. For this artwork, what I was really inspired by were games and maps. I really wanted to create this theme park-esque kind of depiction of Aubrey. And so, here it is. This is the concept. So it's really broken up into, I, I would say like different islands. You've got all these sort of like platforms that are all through the design that are connected by bridges, by stairs, some little like fireman's poles that you can go down. And I like that they all come together to create this bigger uh, sort of world. We have uh, text boards, we have these cute little figures, there's monuments and sort of like statues. And then we're gonna start to bring in elements of the Aubrey area as well. So kind of think of it like little islands that are all clustered together. And so this is where you come into it. What I need from you is your artworks to become these little islands and these little platforms that I piece together to create the work. So it really is truly a collaborative artwork that's all pieced together. Let's get creative. So like I mentioned before, what I need you to do is create an artwork that is your interpretation or your response to the idea of what makes Aubrey special to you? It's gonna be individual. Everyone's responses are gonna be different. You can interpret this concept really however you wish. So that means there's no wrong answers. So there's a few things you'll need to do this workshop. There's the Aubrey World template, which you download off my website. If you have a notebook or paper, something that you can do some brainstorming on, uh, pencils, textures, markers, literally anything that you want to use to draw your artwork, and a phone or a camera. That way you can take a photo of your work and submit it to us. Paper, markers, pencils, template, camera, phone, camera phone. So when it comes to the Aubrey World template, if you don't have access to a printer, that's totally fine. There's a few different ways you could approach it. You could just look at it on your computer screen and just draw it onto a piece of paper and just make it your own. You could put some blank paper up to the monitor uh, screen and trace it over the top and use it almost like a light box. Or you could just ignore it altogether, go rogue and make your own template to work from. This workshop really isn't a step-by-step -step instructional kind of workshop. It's actually relies on you having your own interpretation of the concept. So what I'm gonna be doing now is going through some different ways that you can get your ideas and get inspired and start to think of where, what your artwork could really turn into. All right, let's get started. So grab your notepad or some paper and a pen and we're gonna to start to brainstorm a few different ideas. So I'm gonna ask you some questions and you're gonna have a bit of a think about it and write down what, if, what comes to mind for you. So when thinking about Aubrey and what makes it a special place to you, a special place to live in and a special place to visit, are there things that, uh, are there friends you've made whilst living, living here that are really special to you? Or maybe you live there with your family your whole life. Uh, what do you like to do with these people who are special in your life? Uh, are there sports you like to play? Are there groups you're a part of? Uh, do you really enjoy going out in nature and how you have so much open space in Albury? Is there a really sentimental place you like to visit? Maybe it's the river, 
Is there annual events that happen in Aubrey that are really great that the whole community comes out to, like a fete or a fair that you think is really special and unique to the area? All these different types of things that could spark that really personal response to this question. So I want you to have a bit of a think about it and jot down five to, five to eight different points that uh, really align with you and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so now you've got these. We're now gonna write an additional three things onto your list. And these are things that you would tell someone who is coming to visit Aubrey. What would you tell them to do or places to visit? It could be like the art gallery, it could be the library. There might be a really fun shop that you like to always go to and you think more people need to know about it. Maybe it's local artisan markets that are on, parks, pools, whatever it is. So add these extra three things to your list and pretty soon you'll have this really expansive list of ideas that we can then use to translate into our templates in the next step. All right, go have some fun with that and I'll see you in the next part. So now you've got your list of all your ideas that you've brainstormed. Good job you. Now we're going to move on to the mood board. So when you go to my website, when you're on the page, you'll see there's a button on the right hand side that says mood board. If you click onto that, I've actually curated a whole page of images of places within Aubrey that'll help you have a visual reference because sometimes we can't always remember what things look like and like buildings and things like that. So feel free to click on that have a bit of a look and maybe even Google some more images or maybe you want to go around town and take some photos yourself and use those as your references. By having references, it just means that you're able to have a more clear representation of what you're drawing and it makes it easier for people to go, ah, oh, yeah, that's the art gallery, that kind of stuff. Before we get going, there's one more thing to talk about. I want to give you some, uh, some tips, some things to keep in mind when making your work. So tip number one is to be playful. Remember, this is a really fantasy, surreal kind of concept. Remember, I'm wanting to make this feel like, a, like a, a theme park approach. So don't focus too much on realism. Make sure you just like be playful and just make as much as you can. Tip number two is look at the building references if you're using them. So for example, for the art gallery, something that I always think about first when I'm thinking about that is at the back of the building, they have that spider web kind of looking sculpture that's on top of the roof. As soon as I see that, I instantly think of the, the art gallery and I know what it is. And like for the library, I always think of the X structure that's at the front on like the driveway at the front area. That's something that really reminds me straight away that we're looking at the, the library. So if you're looking at maybe pictures of your house or any other sort of architecture or sculptures, what are the main things that really jump out to you first? And maybe that's a good starting point to drawing. Tip number three, it's things like if you're really into the trees and the nature side of what you want to depict, maybe it's drawing the shapes of the leaves in really large scale. So you don't have to you know, draw a full tree or a full building, you can actually just draw a section of it and it's a representation and it symbolizes what it is. And tip number four is to divide your, your templates up into different sections. So obviously you've come up with all these ideas that you've brainstormed and you wanna try and fit in as many as possible. So maybe section off the bottom right hand corner for one, one idea and maybe the back island is for another one and the other corner is for a third. And then they can start to all merge together and create this really fun platform. Uh, so they should hopefully help you out in getting started. I want to show you one more example because I think this one's super cute and I, I just want to share it with you and show you. So let's check it out. This is another example of a really great submission and showing how I translate it into the mural concept. So over at the back, we have a nice park setting. There's a bird. It's all about one, like the person really enjoying going to the park. Um, the big flowers and the bees represent spring because that's their favorite time of the year. We've got, uh, they really enjoy swimming in the local pool when their cousins visit them in holidays, going to markets and buying really nice art 
like earrings and, and, and flowers and things like that. And then this is a depiction of them at the very front. Very cute. I love the rainbow stairs. It's all lovely. And then we have my translation. So I've made everything a lot bigger and bolder. So up the back, we still have this park setting, but now this bird is almost like a huge sculpture that sits on this, uh, on the bench. The trees are a lot more animated and almost like big flowers. Down the front, the pool pretty much remains the same. And then over to the left-hand side, I've made this big statue, imagining these flowers are like three meters tall. I've been able to pull together the bees and the stars and a few of the different elements into one key item. And over in the corner, I've kept the, the person there, but I've just made them more of like a character, like a really fun animated character. So like I've said from the very beginning, your, your concept and your story is going to remain really true to what's uh, in your submission, but I'm just going to tweak the way that we represent it so it's easy for us to paint it onto the wall and bring everyone's ideas together sitting in one cohesive world. With all that being said, you have now got all your ideas, you've got your inspiration, you've got your mood board sorted, it's time to get creative and do your response. Remember, take your time, have fun, and you can do multiple submissions as well if you choose. So let's get creative and let's get going. So once you have done your beautiful artwork, what we now need you to do is to get out your phone or your camera, take a really nice clear picture of it and submit it through the website. So you can go onto the Aubrey City Council's page. There's a form there. You will write a little description about your artwork. This is a really important part for me because I want to know what your artwork's about. I want to know what's really important and what you're trying to say. So then when I'm telling the story on the wall, I can tell your actual story. Make sure you fill out that section. Make sure you attach your artwork as well because that would be a disaster if you don't actually attach it and put in all your information and submit it. And just remember that all the submissions are due by the 25th of October as well. So be sure to get them in before then. Once all the artworks have been submitted and they arrive in my email, the next thing is I'm gonna be taking them into stage two and starting to design the final mural concepts. A little disclaimer is that Potentially not all of the artworks will be able to be used. If I have a huge quantity of submissions, it just may mean we might not have the physical space in the design to actually put them all in. But I promise, I promise, I promise, I will try my best to put everyone's work in. And that's why it's really important to know what your artwork means. Because if we have a lot of people with similar things, we can make sure that we can pull similar, similar responses together and make sure we include as many people as possible. If drawing just isn't your thing, that's totally fine. You're able to submit your responses in all different types of ways. You could do an audio recording, you could uh, do a video, you could do a poem, take some photos, you could just write a response. That's totally fine, just do it in the attachment on the form as well. I hope that all made sense, but if it doesn't and you need to rewatch anything, that's fine. You can go to the timeline and click on any of the chapters. You can rewatch it, pause it, totally fine. If you want to stay up to date with myself and how the project is going and when we're actually going to be in Aubrey painting the mural, the best thing to do is to follow me on Instagram. And with that being said, it's time to get creative, time to have some fun, enjoy, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>